And I wanted to talk about this one, which I also have a video for. So let's go ahead and get into this. So GPUs got really expensive. There's this cool project that here recently just came out. And uh, I think I even have the, it's not for sale yet, but this thing is really dope. Um, so they're calling it the 50, 5027 POS. <laughs> um, but this is essentially an Asus Nuke 13 or NUC or whatever, uh, 13th gen core i7 with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 and a two terabyte NVMe with a 20 series GPU. Um, and it, it effectively looks like they, they made a cute, a cute little box for it. But it's a GPU with a full CP with a full, it's a full PC in a GPU build. And uh, the cool thing about it too is- We talked uh, about how they can't review yeah. the 5060, but <laughs> we, got, we got the better one. This is the brand new we NVIDia got, yeah. GeForce 5027. So here's Piece the video of, on that. I wanted to react to it. Piece of ROPS. It's the Piece of ROPS edition. Uh, that's the, the S is from the end of ROPS. This is the common backwards acronym. You don't hear about them a lot, but that's what we're here for. So this is made by a company called Cherry Tree, which we covered in a news episode a long time ago, and I'll explain why in a moment. But this is a video card, sort of, that they built, and it's actually a computer. The, the computer is in the video card. We brought you this video with our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We sell fund all of our own travel and never charge companies to... And by the way, I love that they do this. Um, Gamers Nexus has really been inspiring to me for starting locals, uh, staying away from getting sponsors, which I think is even more important in crypto, especially now more than ever. And I think supporting Gamers Nexus... And the work they do is fantastic because um, they do do a lot of controversial work uh, and they do call it as they see it. And that has put them in a position of struggling with sponsorships, etc. cetera. So um, I appreciate what they do. To visit their own booths, allowing us to maintain independence in our field reports. We film their stuff because we think it's interesting and sometimes we walk away. And that's all because we rely on Patreon our usual background ads, and our store. Lately on Patreon, we've started a revitalization effort, and we've posted a new Patrons Ask GN episode with Q&A and a behind-the-scenes post about what we have coming up. If you want to support our independent reporting and the way we don't sell fully paid-for coverage, especially as these trips cost us sometimes tens of thousands of dollars for two weeks in the field, head over to patreon.com slash gamersnexus and sign up today. We have plenty more bonus posts coming. And as you can see here, this was once a Gigabyte video card. But then we're told that FedEx destroyed it. And so it has become a full computer and we get to test it. And yes, we are actually benchmarking this because it's probably still better than a 5060. So that's what we're looking at today. Now, Cherry Tree makes this. This is a Borg Cube, except it is a Borg Cube computer case. And I bought it <laughs> a couple of years ago. We never, we didn't ask for it. We tried to be undercover at the time. I'm guessing they probably figured out who we were. But I never actually asked, and we didn't make content for it. Now, the reason I think they probably figured out who we were is because they have a service on their website where you can have them make a custom cat-themed mini Borg cube to go on top of this one. And I asked <laughs> them to make one. And I submitted a screenshot of Snowflake from one of our videos. So I don't know if they ever figured that out. I used an alias. But uh, I, I would assume they did. Anyway, they make this stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, this I think this was like officially licensed. And That's everything. a ridiculous and case, dude. With... That case is a lot. There's a there's a lot going on there. <laughs> yes, customs or something like that. We need a good build project. So anyway, that's computer case. That's not why we're here today. What we're here for today is the GFARS 5027 piece of sh ROPS edition. Uh, and I need to tear this down. Patrick has done testing for it. We've done acoustics. Now you might want to know why. Sometimes it's nice to actually have fun with computer hardware, and uh, the smaller companies often make that possible. So they custom made this thing. We're gonna open it up. You can see here, we'll do a walk around. Of the, they're not selling this, just to be clear. Like this is, they sent this to us and they were like, maybe this will be fun for you. And I said, yes, that will absolutely be fun. So they've hollowed out what was once the Gigabyte Shroud. Yeah. They've replaced the Gigabyte logo with their own. 
Fair enough. And uh, colored it differently. It's still got the three fans. They work. They actually blow air into a separate NUC mini PC. So on this side of the card, there's actually a small computer. And you can even see it's I.O. here in the PCI expansion slot. Now I mean, that's great. Like just for like a one off build off that they even got the I.O. there. I still think a BC250 makes more sense than this. If you wanted to do it. If you built something like this, you could actually put this like, in to a on. computer and use it as a computer inside of a computer. Uh, it, it is not powered through the PCIe slot. It's purely decorative. This is not the old NUC where it was like a PCIe card. It's a normal PCB NUC inside of this without the PCIe slot. Now for the rest, so like they customized the power adapter. So it uses a barrel plug adapter. Like effectively, that's what I've been doing with these BC250s, right? Is like just running it as a computer. I think the better thing about this is I bet this uses even less power than that. And it's just, I think, designed a lot better, right? <laughs> but it's kind of funny that this is like, it'll be interesting to see the direction all of these things take as, you know, components get more powerful and smaller uh, in but capability. They it to fit this, what used to be eight pin connector. On this side, you see a bunch of wires and then also a switch. And that is our power button. I'm seeing some screws here. This one is colored silver. This one's colored silver. My assumption is that that's for a reason. And then we've got some others, which these would traditionally, I think, be to hold in the Gigabyte logo from what I remember when we tore down a Gigabyte card. Normally, there's screws in the back. You can see a lot of those are missing this time. Uh, there are still two here. I'm sure there's a couple others we'll find along the way. So, so let's start with the silver ones here. We've got two to take out. There's a large screw. Oh, that's a short screw. Okay. What does it mean? It has to be like, I'm thinking this, this large one is symbolic of what it feels like. I want to, to see the teardown of this. 50, 60. Just one large screw. And the small one is representative of the ROPs that are not in it. All right, let's see if that did anything. So that's <laughs> Dig it, the 50, 60. The a couple more on the bottom. Like how... The switch is pretty nice, actually. We were kind of talking to Cherry Tree, and the question was more or less, but why? And the answer was, because fun. This is pretty sick. I think right, so I think that's the best reason to do anything. So, got a taped connector here. Thanks for the sub, so Stick Shark. Looks like, I mean, that is an RGB connector. And that's the other side of it, adapted. The shroud is just a gigabyte shroud. I want to just treat this like a GPU teardown because I feel like that's what I'm doing, but there's a fin stack. Let's just do it. Who cares? We'll, we'll go for it. It's got five heat pipes in it. It looks like these are probably six mil copper heat pipes. And then the fin stack over here would typically cover the VRMs. So that'd be the MOSFETs, the inductors, one half the VRM. And then over on this side, it is missing. <laughs> so the rest of it is gone. I'm assuming the heat pipes go nowhere. We're going to find out pretty soon. Uh, cause they should go into a, a cold plate that doesn't. So exist. how is the dye cooled here? To exist. And that's fine. I don't think this needs a whole lot of cooling. Now this looks like the actual cooling solution. Let's try to get okay. to that. So how does the rest of this? We've got the LED strip here. Zip tied in place. We've got a we have to have the RGB here. I'm thinking it screws on the back. An interesting challenge. I, oh, a, that's a plate it, right there, huh? It's an interesting approach. Which part? Uh, right a and a here. Screen. Yeah. Oh, is there a standoff under there? Oh yeah. The the going Hold on, buddy. I noticed the. Uh, it did a screw into a standoff going through the back. That's actually pretty good. That's a that's a clever like quick way to do it. Okay. Nvidia need to take this in consideration. <laughs> you know what? That's that's right. So so Jensen, as we all know, four elephants. Four elephants. <laughs> one GPU. <laughs> How is this assembled? There's one more. Four elephants. Okay. 
Yeah, I was looking at the their website as well. And if you go like home, it's all Star Wars and Star Trek stuff, like the board cube, a uh, bunch of Star Wars computers and accessories. They got Darth Vader here. I mean, I don't know what the quality of these cases are. But yeah, it looks like they just, that's all they do. It's like silly stuff. Ooh, that's promising. I'm being more careful with this than with like $2,000 video cards. All right, so we're tied down by the cables. I think I need to clip the cable ties. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I can remove the power connectors actually. Okay. Now there was a zip tie. It's definitely a good idea that to not bring this through the TSA. I think the easiest thing to do <laughs> is going to be to dismount the nut. Hell yeah, I'd buy it. It's. Oh, God. I mean, to be honest, it's it's very engineering sampley, and it is definitely really jank. Like I think like they would need to do a lot of R and D and re in engineering and redesign. Right. I don't remember how to put this together. It's like, what screws are on the shop floor today? There you go. That's a, I'm trying to figure out, is this a, like a, this a is heat the plate? This is why they sent it to us. Well, that's okay. the nook, right? I'm not sure what these do. These are definitely power cables. It's just power and ground. I should, are these the same? I should maybe mark these. I look forward to not knowing what that means in a few days when I put it back together. <laughs> wow, this is cool. Look at this. All right, that's creative. Check that out. So for whatever this is, oh, this is the switch. Yeah, see down here? So that's the, yeah, that's that's the power the... switch right there. So this uh, is like the front panel connector. They've soldered the power switch into it. That's how you get the jump start. Um, so I guess they identified which pins on the NUC. I don't know if this is like a um, individually wired or if it's one large uh, power connector. I, I don't remember which NUC this is, but they identified it and they just hardwired the switch and that's, I can respect that, that's cool. This is very creative. All right. Let's just defer over to the screw pile. So that'll be fun later. Uh, all right, there's the SSD. It is, you know what, the box actually tells us what this is. Let's just take a look. I've been running these in so, the, I've I, been running those team groups in the uh, BC250s as well. As you all know, memory capacity on NVIDIA's GPUs, it's, it's been a problem and because we can barely get eight gigabytes in some cases, what Cherry Tree's done here with their revolutionary new GeForce 5027 POS edition, which is, <laughs> as we all know, underclocked and overrated. <laughs> what they have done with this revolutionary new technology is make it 64 gigabytes and two terabytes. Complain about that, Steve from Hardware Unboxed. Is that enough VRAM for you? Two terabytes? Are you happy now? Are you not on the top of your roof to complain about how bad the NVIDIA GPUs are? So we've got a um, just wireless card here. So that's just running through. It looks like the antenna are running up here. And then otherwise, there's the 64 gigabytes of system memory. So that's team group memory. It is DDR4 3200. I suppose the SOC is under here. Okay, really so that's to cherry tree here. We've never worked with their stuff before. I've only ever covered so there's it. no. Uh, it's all Any integrated. Everything's on the nook, huh? So there's not like a. Let me look at this. They're just being silly, far superior to that. So there's no GPU in here at all, huh? Demonstrating a level of creativity that I would like to engage more with. I think it's adhesive. 
Yeah, that's adhesive there. Let's, I guess, disconnect it. The path of fan. Okay. I think it's this Mylar flow guide. Let's peel that. That would definitely take the fan off, but I'd prefer to leave it on and just pull the whole heat sink. None of this is necessary, but we've come this far. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> this is like a lot more work than a video card. There's the blower fan. This was butted up against the fin stack. So this tiny fin stack is the actual heat sink. This fin stack, <laughs> if you've ever wondered, I wonder what heat pipes look like inside. There it is. I mean, it's not as clean as, as a water jet, uh, <laughs> but it's a pretty good cut. And For some work. reason, I thought that they had hooked up a Nook to like a 20 series GPU, but that's not at all what happened here. Like at all. Centered copper powder <laughs> heat pipes. So then there's uh, two heat pipes here, just routed right over the SOC. SOC's under that plate. And they aren't selling uh, them. That was our power cable. Four which pin. Out to the barrel adapter. And the barrel adapter here. You can see they've creatively wired in oh. the ground cables and power. <laughs> it's so just bad. Into what used to be the eight pin. It's a good thing they didn't use twelve volt high power for this. And then they like bundled a PCB down here for some kind of control. And then this resin plate, um, which we did get some information on. My understanding is they just did this for fun. It was basically like they needed a back plate. And so they just made this in the shape of the original PCB or something like that. So anyway, that's the teardown. This thing's cool. I, I really like this. So that is the <laughs> cherry tree. Just one more time for NVIDIA. GeForce 5027 piece of shit edition. So that is what they did <laughs> with all two terabytes and 64 First gigabytes. First day at work project. Of... Dude, that's like some of the worst soldering I've seen, too. Various types of volatile and non-volatile memory. Uh, we're going to get into some of the testing now because we did do testing. And this, this is making me want to do something with this now. So not ready to yet. We'll talk about it when we're ready. I, I do, however, like the detail of Snowflake knocking one of the Enterprise variants off of the top of the Borg cube. That is pretty cool. Hold and on, guys. Job is it's pretty, it's pretty damn accurate, actually. So I'm assuming they figured Bubba's out. Bubba's wanting bubble gum. Uh, if they didn't, then surprise. All right, let's get into the benchmarks. Now getting into the more serious stuff. So briefly, the core specs for this we found include an Asus NUC 13 ANK-B system at its core, which... Of course, everybody knows the spec for that by heart, by which, I mean, we looked it up, and it has an i7-1360p, which we also had to look up. That has an integrated Iris XE graphics solution with six XE cores. It's got 64 gigabytes of system memory, DDR4-3200, <coughs> as we saw. It's got an external power supply. The power supply is 20 volts, but Cherry Tree says it can also use a 12-volt PCIe power connector. We didn't try that, though. All of this was built in what used to be a 2070 Super as well. So now for the serious, no jokes, but the, very... But the 2070 Super isn't even hooked up to the Nook, so, like, it's just a Nook. It's your testing plan. For some reason, we decided this was actually necessary. We kept things simple by performing our power, thermal, and acoustic testing... It is a good troll. Fair enough, Squirrel. I got baited hardcore on this, for sure. I, I don't even need to look at, you know... <laughs> These pitchforks. <laughs> he does the power consumption. Oh God! Did they night raid? Did they not any gaming on here? There you go. Here I'll share the video so you guys can go watch it. Anyways, well, I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. If you would like to see more from this particular episode, take a look up here. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me directly, you can go to sonofatech.locals.com and become a member. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.